Get gram-worthy style with the latest influencer collections to land on Boohoo with clothes for the everyday and an extraordinary day handpicked by your fave influencers. Now that's the opening line of Boohoo's influencer collection, a classification they chose for the items that were specifically chosen by influencers who support and work for the brand. Like so many other fast fashion companies, Boohoo relies on their social media stars to spread the word about them and sell their products to the masses. In one year alone, the company spent about 80 million euros on its influencer marketing campaign, and it shows. It seems everywhere you turn, from Instagram to Snapchat to TikTok, you can't escape beautiful women, often of all shapes and sizes, excitedly opening their boxes from their favorite company. Smiling ear to ear, they show off their new goodies, ensuring you that the clothes, shoes, jewelry, and basically everything you could ever dream of were just the cutest things you'll ever see and came from a company with a stellar reputation. At first glance, this all seems wonderful, but when you look a little closer, you realize something. This sudden blitz of influencer marketing on all of the most used social media platforms is designed to distract you from what is truly going on behind the scenes. After shocking revelations of Boohoo's horrific treatment of their employees came to light, showing the world just how little the company took care of their employees' safety or their financial well-being, many influencers began to jump ship. But the company was smart. They assured their people that they were working to fix the issues, and they relied on the dwindling income from cash-strapped brands to convince their influencers to stay loyal. In a time when their clothing company should have come crashing down, social media brought them back to life. Instead of failing, they flourished, doubling their profits and amassing a giant following of 2.6 million followers online. They use brightly colored messaging filled with memes and emojis to bring the oh so important 16 to 24 year old market into their online oasis of seemingly endless fashion. While everything online seemed perfect and their marketing paid off twofold, the people behind the scenes, the ones making the clothes, were falling behind. They were paid close to pennies, placed in factories in dangerous conditions and forced to work even when sick. Their skirts are cute, sure, but it's not worth the exploitation of people. So what else is going on behind all of these fashion halls? Hello and welcome to The Corporate Casket. I'm the Illuminati and today we're going to be talking about the fast fashion company, Boohoo. It was the dawn of COVID-19 and businesses and factories were shutting down left and right in the streets of England, but one seemed to remain the same, Boohoo. Their shares increased by 22% over the course of the COVID-19 lockdown as more and more people turned to online shopping out of boredom, stress relief, or a lack of better options. With so much money to be made and opportunities up for the taking, Boohoo decided to take advantage. Even during lockdowns, their workers remained. Sure, they could have provided safety equipment with their newfound influx of cash, but that's just not the way it went down because, you know, of course it's not. Reports began flooding in that workers were being told to come to work despite testing positive for the highly contagious and dangerous virus. If they refused, they would be denied pay. One person in the factory told his employer that he was not feeling well. When he requested to use his sick leave, his manager told him he wouldn't get it. And if he didn't work, he would also be fired. So people went in hoping for the best with no assistance from the massive company. There were pretty much no protections in sight actually. Those in the factories would arrive every day to a working condition that offered no assistance in preventing the spread of the virus. There were no masks provided, no requirements for social distancing, and sanitizing stations were seemingly out of the question. Greed and a complete lack of care for the people that make the thousands of clothing items daily were on full display. It was business as usual, according to the factory workers. And while Boohoo had sent out instructions to all of their factories to take proper precautions, they did so while also instructing that they not slow down the pace. Kind of a contradiction, don't you think? It's just fast fashion they could have taken a couple of weeks to slow down a little bit so they could put the proper equipment in place to ensure their workers' safety. That was actually kind of like the very least they could do, but they didn't. And workers reported doing nearly daily 12 hour shifts in unsafe conditions where hundreds of staff were jammed together processing up to 400,000 orders per day. 
But the lack of COVID-19 protections was just the beginning of the problem within the company's factories. Soon, a report would come out that shocked everyone. As private investigators began pouring into the factories to assess what was actually going on, since government investigators seemed to be refusing the job, the beginning of the worst of it was revealed. Allegations came sweeping in, calling the treatment of workers in Boohoo's Leicester factories modern slavery. An undercover journalist for the Sunday Times decided to work just two days in the factory and was met with horrific treatment immediately. There, they discovered they would only be paid three euros 50 cents an hour, a massive difference from the United Kingdom minimum wage of 872. A foreman of the factory told the reporter, these motherfuckers know how to exploit people like us. They make profits like hell and pay us in peanuts. The factory, which made clothing for Nasty Gal, a company that's owned by Boohoo, was operating well below the standards of living. But as the reports came flooding in, they claimed they knew nothing about it. This was merely a one-off mistake by the factory in question. They released a statement that read in part, Nasty Gal does not allow any of its suppliers to pay less than the minimum wage and has a zero tolerance approach to incidences of modern slavery. We have terminated relationships with suppliers where evidence of non-compliance with our strict code of conduct is found. Maybe that would have been enough if it were true, but it wasn't. This wasn't a one-time mistake of hiring the wrong factory to make their clothing. This was a systemic issue within the company, one that was just now starting to come to light. In no time, similar allegations against the company began flooding in. Audits found that at least 18 factories had been severely underpaying their employees. And to make matters worse, they weren't really good at keeping records. So it's very likely that people were not only just underpaid for the hours they worked, but sometimes they weren't paid at all. Critical records kept by companies were seemingly nowhere to be found. Workers would never clock in or out of work and it was impossible to verify wages, but there's more. Through those audits, reports which dated all the way back to 2017 were found that there were multiple accounts of inadequate fire safety procedures, that right to work documents had miraculously disappeared. And oh yeah, they have that little sneaky habit of never paying furlough money too. Holiday pay, that's virtually non-existent. Basically anything that could go wrong in factories did go wrong here. The isolated events that Boohoo claimed was clearly an all out lie and their mistreatment of workers ran rampant for years. Now, after multiple entities, including customers, called the company out for their repetitive malpractice, they decided to do what pretty much every company does when they're accused of doing something wrong. Well, they investigated themselves. Yes, of course, because that brings so many solutions. So don't you worry your pretty little head because they hired an independent investigator who promised to actually do their job. And hey, it looks like at the very least, they kind of did, which is shocking. The report that was released in September found that not only did Boohoo's factories 100% commit the atrocious acts that they were accused of, but Boohoo knew what was going on. The report reads in part, from at the very latest, December, 2019, senior Boohoo directors knew for a fact that there were very serious issues about the treatment of factory workers in Leicester. And whilst it put in place a program intended to remedy this, it did not move quickly enough. Gotta love hearing that a company knew what was going on behind the scenes for almost a full year or more before whistleblowers had to step forward. That really pokes a whopping hole through their story that they were just so shocked and concerned about what was happening. As for their actions during COVID-19, well, they also apparently knew what was going on there too. The investigator found that the company had capitalized on the commercial opportunities offered by lockdown. And apparently Boohoo thought they were supporting the factories which if we're being completely honest, I'm sure was true. Those factories probably made bank during the lockdown when no one else was supposed to be operating, but it was at the expense of the workers who were struggling to survive on less than bare minimum salaries and having even those threatened if they needed to take off work. You know, like they were legally required to be able to do, but apparently were not actually allowed to do. Now the company took no responsibility for this and once again blamed a few rogue factories, It wasn't us, they said, it was the bad apples. Does that sound familiar to you? Hopefully after their own investigator found and announced to the world that the company was in fact fully aware of the labor malpractice that was going on, everything would be fixed, right? Well, wrong again. Months after the accusations of the factory mistreatment became national news, a new scandal was afoot. This time it was discovered that the company's supplier in Pakistan were partaking in the labor extortion Olympics. So yeah, according to reports, the workers in two factories claimed they were making as little as 47 euros a month. 
Meanwhile, the minimum wage for unskilled labor in Pakistan is actually about 80 a month. So yeah, about half as much. The Guardian who interviewed over a dozen workers found ample evidence of what was going on. Workers knew they were being abused, but what were they supposed to do? One person told the journalists, I know we are exploited and paid less than the legal minimum, but we can't do anything. If I leave the job, another person will be ready to replace me. But the exploitation wasn't the only issue. It was also the safety. Videos and personal accounts showed motorbikes parked next to flammable materials inside. I don't really know what to tell you, but it just feels like that's basic 101, like do not do that. There were also videos that showed an abundance of fabric stacked high right next to a boiler. As construction was happening in the factory, workers continued. Some were balancing their workstations on bricks as they sewed. Oh yeah, and that monthly wage situation is even worse than you think. It's not like they were working normal hours and making that amount of money. They were working 24 hour shifts and still not making minimum wage. Once again, Boohoo seemed to be breaking their own code of conduct. Go figure. After the Guardian brought the mistreatment of the workers in Pakistan to Boohoo's attention, the company suspended supplier JD Fashion Limited and factory AH Fashion from its supply chain. And to me, I just find it hard to believe that they had no idea what was happening before the Guardian brought it up. I mean, they knew what was going on in Leicester, but they didn't care. So why would this be any different? Still, they claimed that they would have the problem under control. They blamed their use of subcontractors for the multiple instances of labor abuse. And according to Boohoo, they were overhauling their global supply chain and everything would be better. I'm not necessarily in the frame of mind to believe them, considering their consistent dismissal of allegations claiming they knew nothing when they truly knew everything. But hey, maybe they will change. Unfortunately, it seems that fast fashion relies on this type of employee mistreatment. We've seen it time and time again. And for what exactly? Clothes that don't last and are usually terrible quality. Sure, they say they'll do better with their workers, but what about sustainability? Because they've had quite a few issues there too. In 2022, Boohoo announced a major move, one that they hoped would rebrand their reputation as a fast fashion empire and hopefully bring in more customers. They appointed Kourtney Kardashian as the sustainability ambassador for the company. When they announced the new partnership, they told customers that Kourtney was a star that was able to influence and inspire people to make more sustainable choices. And I, like so many others, have one main question here, how? How exactly is Kourtney Kardashian the face behind sustainability? Yay for her, I guess she ditched plastic bottles in 2019 and she planted a couple trees with climate change nonprofits. But isn't that all kind of like the bare minimum when it comes to sustainability? It seems like the company missed the very recent controversy that pointed out the ungodly amount of times the Kardashians use their own personal private jets. In 2018, a study found that jet passengers account for 10 times as many greenhouse gas emissions as a commercial traveler and 150 times more than train travelers. We all know how much the Kardashians just love their private jets, and it doesn't seem like they're doing much to counteract their usage of them. I mean, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, after facing criticism for using Elton John's jet to travel, made clear that they ensured their flight was carbon neutral by making the appropriate contribution to carbon footprint. But is Kourtney Kardashian doing that? No, but Boohoo claimed that she was just the picture perfect example of sustainability for some reason. And almost immediately, people called the company out saying that they were just trying to greenwash the situation, which as defined by environmentalist Jay Westervelt is when a company claims they're doing more for the environment than they actually are. So yeah, that actually sounds like a pretty good definition of what was going on here. While Boohoo celebrated their strictly performative act, others were quick to point out all the ways that they were actually failing. Vice even did a nice and neat little case study on their website. For six days, they monitored it, looking through the new in today section every day, counting every single new piece of clothing. And what they found was shocking. Over the course of just one day, Boohoo uploaded over 100 new pieces of clothing. In the week that Vice was doing the study, they uploaded over 700. To just show how many clothes that really was, Vice took 100 different articles of clothing supplied by themselves, not bought from the company and spread them out on tables. In the picture, the clothes took up two of those giant white tables that people usually use for massive events. There's really no need for that much clothing in one day. In total, the Boohoo site sells about 40,000 styles of clothing every year. And sure, 
Most of their clothes are made out of recycled materials apparently, but that's not as great as it sounds. Recycled polyester still sheds microplastics when it's washed and it's still not going to be biodegradable. Given the fact that almost nothing in fast fashion is made to last or even be worn for a long period of time, it's only a matter of time before all of those clothes wind up in landfills across the world, only for 40,000 new styles to come out and replace them in the meantime. Still, CEO of the fashion group, John Little, claims that the changes were coming to make the 13 brands under the Boohoo name far more sustainable. In a sustainability plan released in 2021, the CEO wrote, We know that fashion faces social and environmental challenges, and we want to play our part in creating a better fashion future. That's why we've made significant changes in the way we run our business. We have developed our first sustainability plan, upfront fashion ready for the future. And okay, John, I guess it's your time to shine, buddy. So what is the plan? Well, they promise to make clothing smarter, better materials, and more sustainable packaging, give customers a way to recycle their garments and remain future focused. By 2025, the company claims they will have clothing which contain recycled or more sustainable sourced materials. And by 2030, all of their materials will be more sustainably sourced. Sure, they don't really say how that's going to happen or what exactly their clothing will be made from or how they're going to ensure less of their clothes end up in landfills or that they just won't produce 40,000 new styles a year. But just trust them though, they've got this apparently just in the way that we should trust them when they say they're going to stop using modern day slavery, right? Of course, everyone is pretty sure that they don't in fact got this. And that's something that Boohoo is also perfectly aware of. However, they don't think it's a problem at all. A spokesperson said that it was not making any claims with its new spokesperson or strategy. They know they don't have the answers. They are just trying to give customers clear, honest, and straightforward information otherwise known as fucking claims, to help them make those decisions. But the sustainability plan just isn't clear. Hiring someone who isn't at all actually qualified to be a sustainability manager is also the furthest thing from being clear. Just saying. In fact, almost seems like the very definition of greenwashing. They say they're doing these things to address problems with fast fashion, when in reality, they aren't really doing much at all. Even when they do take one step forward, they seem to take about 15 steps back. In August, Pretty Little Thing, another one of the brands owned by Boohoo, officially opened the PLT Marketplace. The app allowed people to sell their used clothing and buy used clothing from Pretty Little Thing and multiple other companies. So there we go, resale is an awesome step forward. The creative director, Molly Hay Haig, said it was a step to disrupt the fashion industry. So everyone rejoice. This is a great first action, right? Shopping secondhand is a far more sustainable option and the hope that it could also offer some of the expanded sizing options that are unavailable from traditional retailers is also fabulous. But does it mean that the company will actually stop mass producing clothes at an insanely quick rate? Oh, not necessarily. And I'm not really holding out much hope either. This was the same company that had a 100% off sale a year prior after all, which if you don't know about that, let's talk about it. So you heard me right. At first glance, you might be thinking, that's kind of awesome. And in some ways it is. People that may not have been able to afford clothing were suddenly able to get some gifts for themselves or maybe for others. That's always great to hear. However, from a sustainability standpoint, that's not as awesome. On one Black Friday and Cyber Monday, Pretty Little Thing decided to announce the sale of all sales by tweeting out a link for direct access met with a message that read 100% discount drop. Now, technically speaking, the sale was 80% off for everything, but customers could get another 20% off when they used a promo code. Some obviously rejoiced. Meanwhile, others called out the company for promoting fast fashion. After all, nothing quite screams fast fashion like having a giant blowout sale so you can just replace all the styles the very next day. And just like that, thousands of people had clothing that would eventually end up in landfills And it's likely that many more bought more clothing than they would ever wear. And I mean, it's kind of tempting because it's pretty much free. Now, as the sale was announced, people took to social media to criticize the brand with one user writing, this hashtag Black Friday, official pretty little thing are literally giving away their clothes for free. What does that tell us about how they treat their garment workers? Fast fashion is costing the earth. 
Not only did the sale raise concerns about the fast fashion industry, which Boohoo and their other companies claimed they were trying to fight against, but it also brought up concerns about the workers themselves. How were they able to sell things for free and still pay their workers a livable wage? Were workers being forced to work longer hours to make this sale a possibility? With the company's history of labor abuses, these are all perfectly viable questions to ask. But Pretty Little Thing claimed that everything was okay and posted a statement on Twitter assuring their customers that the sale was a marketing investment and it was not going to reduce the wages for their workers. This type of statement could be comforting if it wasn't for the company's history. This sale took place a year after they had been criticized for another sale that allowed people to purchase items from 10 to 33 cents. And it brings up the question, how much are they truly listening to their customers? They claim they're relying on the people to lead them to the path of better sustainability, but if people voice their concerns on a sale one year and you do an even bigger sale the next year, does that actually say that you're listening to your customers? Like what does that actually say about your listening and comprehension skills, honestly? And what does that say about your commitment to making your company better? Because in my opinion, it doesn't say much at all, at least nothing good. It is after all the responsibility of the brands to be better when it comes to fast fashion. By no means am I judging or shaming anyone who shops at these sites. They are leaps and bounds more affordable, more inclusive, and just frankly easier to shop at for a variety of different budgets and body types. But what's obvious and crystal clear as all get out is that they can have inclusive clothing options and not have overproduction. Like it's obvious they can produce an appropriate amount of clothing with an appropriate size range and an appropriate budget, but they just choose not to. They can be affordable without contributing to the downfall of the environment, but I just don't think they care. As activist Venetia Lamana said, we're all coming at fashion from different points of privilege. We all have different levels of access. I'm not here to shame any individuals on how they shop because I think the onus is on brands. I think Pretty Little Thing and Boohoo and all big brands have a responsibility to drastically reduce their output. And I don't think I could have said it any better. Beyond the horrific labor conditions, the lack of commitment to sustainability and the seemingly endless stream of denying any accountability, there is one other big thing about Boohoo that truly cannot be ignored. And that is their abysmal commitment to providing good clothing or customer service to the people that do purchase their clothing. The reviews are in and they're not very good. And before we go ahead and take a moment to look at those reviews, I'm just gonna have a moment here to thank today's sponsors. And today, as a few of you might be aware if you've been looking at my Twitter or anything, is a very special message from Casper. Tis the season for stuffing turkeys and of course, stuffing your faces. But Casper has to be especially grateful for this season. And that's right, he's thankful for Mint Mobile's sweet deals and the savings they've given him all year round. This year, Casper spent just 15 bucks a month to get high-speed data and unlimited talk and text. His old provider, well, they charged almost $90. That means Casper saved close to $1,000 this year. And Casper can't wait to spend that money on Christmas gifts for all his loved ones, if they're lucky. He may just end up spending it all on treats and peanut butter bones. After all, $1,000 can buy a lot of those. And I do mean a lot of treats. But Mint Mobile is offering even more deals this holiday season. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three month plan, you'll get another three months for free. Not only is Casper thankful for the savings Mint Mobile brings, but he can share the joy around the table with his family and sign them up for a Mint Mobile family plan so they can get in on the savings too. Dig in everyone. Casper and his whole family can gobble up these delicious deals and like their Thanksgiving feast, there's plenty to go around too. They can all enjoy high-speed data and unlimited talk and text for just 15 bucks a month, no catch. It really is that affordable and that amazing. And without any tricks, maybe now you'll finally have something to talk about around the dinner table that isn't so controversial. So no matter the size of your family, Mint Mobile has a plan that's right for you because their family plans start at just two lines. And don't worry, you won't have to worry about sharing data because you accidentally introduced Grandma Doris to Candy Crush because she won't stop playing it everywhere she goes. It's got everyone covered. With Mint Mobile's family plan, you can mix and match so everyone gets the individual plan that's just the right amount of data they need. 
Just follow their three simple steps. Buy your lines, activate them, and build your family. It really is that easy. Plus, even Casper's not so tech savvy relatives can switch with ease. And if they're having trouble, don't worry. You don't have to stay on the line with Doris and walk her through a complicated process all afternoon. Instead, Mint Mobile will help you switch for free, including calling your current carrier for you. And if Doris needs a new phone, Mint Mobile's got her back. And for a limited time, they're offering six months of free service when you buy one of their select devices and plans. Do you love the phone you have? Well, no trouble there either. You can keep everything you've got. Just get a new SIM card or even an eSIM or change it up and shop for a whole variety of phones at Mint Mobile. Plus, going online only with eSIM eliminates the traditional cost of retail and Mint Mobile is passing those savings on to you. Other service providers sneak in fees to a miles long contract, like how Aunt Jean always sneaks mentioning how you're still single into the conversation. But Mint Mobile doesn't do that. They've got no contracts, meaning that both signing up and canceling are as easy as a slice of pumpkin or apple pie. So what are you waiting for? Gobble up these deals at mintmobile.com slash Casper to get three months of Mint Mobile for free when you buy three months of service. Again, buy three, get three free at mintmobile.com slash Casper. So we all know that fast fashion seems to have an overwhelming issue with the quality of its product, but Boohoo in particular seems to be in its own special class of horrific clothing. When you Google the reviews, you're likely to also find an abundance of past customers screaming to the abyss, begging people not to buy their clothing. Sure, the shipping was fast and the tracking was helpful to them, but once the clothing arrived, they were met with unwearable fashions. The quality was horrid, one review read, It was see-through, the stitching was falling apart, and it was not even worth the trouble of returning. The last part is obviously the most troubling to me. Now, we can likely be certain that those articles of clothing showed up in a landfill because not even worth the trouble of returning means directly into the trash bin. So how wonderful. Now, perhaps the person decided to donate the clothing, which also isn't that great because people also deserve to have wearable clothing regardless of who they are. Donating unwearable clothing is not really a flex either. Others showed pictures of an alleged sequin dress, which unfortunately the sequins were not even sequins at all, just a bunch of plastic rounds. This review was in 2022. What happened to the whole promise of using less harmful materials for the clothing? Like, where did that go? Gone already? All right. Now, even when people try to return their products, it seems like this is an impossible task. One review with a title that read, wow, poor, 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 detailed the person's terrible experience in trying to return their items. They packed up their things, went on their way to the post office and even included the receipt. However, despite all of the effort, they were refused a refund. Why? Because Boohoo claimed they never received the package. Another had a similar story and even shared handy little messages from Boohoo claiming that they would receive their refund by a certain date, but the day never came. Even when they were told they would be sent to a specialist to review the order, they were met with no response. In total, 16 emails were sent to no avail. The reviews found on Better Business Bureau aren't much better either. Some claimed that they had never received their package. Another named Georgina got two different styles of boots, both for the right foot. Funny and silly mistakes aside, Georgina obviously wanted the company's assistance in trying to fix this error. Instead, they were met with plenty of bots who were predictably unhelpful. When they were finally able to ship the boots back, they were met with the same response found in other reviews. The company simply never received them. Furthermore, Georgina was told to label the return as a sweater, but promised an exchange for matching boots. Since the label said sweater, they got no exchange and were left with a measly $12 refund, way less than the $70 they originally paid. Page after page and website after website, there seemed to be nothing but bad reviews. Some said their clothes smelled rancid, some had troubles with returns, and some literally never even got their order. If I was someone scrolling through this looking to see if the company was a scam or not, I would have just made my mind up right then and there to never buy from them in my life. But hey, that's just me. If the horrific labor practices, unsustainable production model, or constant gaslighting isn't enough to convince you that maybe Boohoo just isn't for you, you, then maybe these reviews will do the trick. 
Either way, it seems like Boohoo has a lot of work to be done before they became the company they promised to everyone that they think they are. For now, they'll probably just keep smearing Kourtney Kardashian's face everywhere, praying that people won't notice what's really going on behind the scenes. But with all of that being said, that's where we're going to end today's episode of The Corporate Casket. I hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. I wanna thank you so much for joining me for today's episode. I know there's a million and a half things you could be doing in the world, yet you chose to spend some time here with me. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. 